I'm out of all the coffee pods that I actually like and we're trying to use up the other ones and it's just very bitter. So in case you missed it, oh Meryl, I've been waiting for a break in her meows and it's not really been happening. So it's bright and early this morning, still dark outside, 6.07 a.m. Rocking with our coffee, that's fab. Last year in November, I started the program and for those of you who haven't known because i realized i actually haven't talked about it all that much like i mentioned it a few times maybe twice maybe two videos i don't know but for those of you who saw those videos and have been cheering your girl on i really appreciate it but last november i signed on uh with DIY body and I started doing personal training through their program and their app and also a diet plan and I just It's like changed my life in so sorry my nose is itchy. I just always every time I a little bit It changed my life for the better in so many ways and uh, It's coming up to the end of my year and I'm absolutely gonna be signing on for another year because I feel like I can't be Left to my own devices and when I first started it I went into it full like I literally did a winter hibernation from November to February, I just followed this plan to a T and I came out on the other side. I, f I felt like a new human. My skin was glowing, my gut was happy. <laughs> I was pooping on the regular and I lost 15 pounds. I didn't realize how inflamed and like I had been feeling and obviously like my goal to having my dream biceps that I've talked about forever uh, was like coming to fruition and I felt amazing but kind of since February <laughs> really I have not been following it in the same way that I did and that's fine we had a lot going on this year it was a big year for our friends and our personal life like we had lots of weddings bachelorette parties we were all turning 30 like it's just been a big year of celebrations and that's totally fine but the last few months specifically pretty much since like July since the wedding stress started to hit me I have been off <laughs> I have not been following the plan I have not been consistent with it at all and I've really not been feeling good and right now like the gas the gas be gassing I feel like I am hurting Dan Dan is hurting from this <laughs> okay so to celebrate continuing on another year of the program I thought that I would talk about it in a little bit more of a meaningful way for those of you who are endlessly confused by the constant references to the program hopefully this will give you some insight guys starting in November the winter hibernation I'm starting hot girl winter this is what I'm, I'm lovingly calling it hot girl winter okay I saw a lot of people on TikTok talking about the 75 hotter and it was kind of a little play on the 75 hard some people were doing the 75 soft the 75 hotter whatever it's like whatever works for you you have to do whatever works for you in your life and your workout and your health and wellness this is gonna be my hot girl winter so this morning we are starting this together and I'm gonna be showing you the seven things that I am focusing on in my daily life to have a hot girl winter. And that is for my overall health, wellness, fitness, life, and well-being. Welcome to Hot Girl Winter fam. Here's the seven things that we're gonna do together. We've got a spotlight on us guys to start off the first thing that we're doing for Hot Girl Winter and that is that we are going to be consistently doing our weight workouts. My workout split is often changing. It kind of just depends on what my lovely trainer decides to give me but currently I'm on a five day a week workout split and I've got two upper body days, two leg days and one kind of combined full body but more emphasis on the booty. Trying to grow that bootang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Dan and I actually do have our home gym set up in the garage but we decided to kind of switch it up for winter to help keep us a little bit more motivated. We're already driving to come play tennis often in the mornings and we actually found a gym very close to the tennis center that we've been coming to and it's been really nice. It's a nice way to get out of the house especially because we don't leave the house all that much. It's kind of a little bit more motivating but obviously on the days when we're not playing tennis we're not going to drive here and come here. For the days where we're at home we can still keep up and stay consistent with our workouts. And that's something that I have not been good about the last few months. I've really been off the game with staying consistent with the lifting workouts. And that's where I feel like the most progress happens. Like if you're not doing the same things over and over again, you're not gonna progress in those things. So I need to pick up the slack, get the shoulders back popping, get the booty back popping. And I think today I have a pull day. We'll see. Let's pick up those weights and put them back down. So we've joined Gold's Gym here in Langley and it's great because when you join one gym, you can access the other ones. So the nights that we spend downtown, we can also go to the Gold's Gym downtown and that has been fabulous so far. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Guys, the irony of what just happened is so funny to me. So the gym was packed, packed. We come at this time every day. We've been coming for a couple weeks now at this time. It's always empty because it's like after the first thing in the morning rush. Packed, packed. There are people in every machine. I literally, like, I'm not gonna take clips <laughs> of people working out beside me. Um, I do have some shame. I am not a shameless content creator. I'm not gonna stand there with a tripod. Also, like, I fully understand when bodybuilders and people who are like so ripped are standing there with their tripod. Whenever they do that, I'm like, props to you, kudos. I'm gonna watch your content, but I am not shredded enough to be sitting in a very busy gym of bodybuilding people with a tripod. So here we are. I did my shoulder day, but all that matters is the deed is done. We'll do more in-depth workouts uh, later on. I'll film it in the gym, but just know, Hawker winter, weight workout complete. All right, we're home. I am still in my coat because I am freezing. And let's talk about the second thing that we're doing for Hot Girl Winter. And that is sticking to our meal plan, okay? This girl right here has a lot of dietary issues. I've had a lot of stomach, constipation, gas, all that, you know, all, all the good stuff. There's been a lot of issues over the years. And the best that I have ever felt in my life is when I was sticking to my meal plan. Now I do have a general guideline of like my calorie intake, my macros, all that good stuff that is given to me by my trainer. But anyway, you can do it. You can do a little online macro calculator. I am tracking my food and I am tracking my macros. I'm also trying to really, really get some fiber in. So I'm doing a general meal plan, but as far as like the meals that I make, that is up to me and my discretion for what I want to create for the day. And I do have a lot of fun with cooking and I also don't have any problem with eating the same things over and over again. If I find a meal that I love and I want to eat it, I will continue happily to eat that every day. So that's fine. The biggest thing for me is the snacking and McDonald's, honestly. Love McDonald's any day of the week. And I also love to eat blizzards on the daily and that's not good. And in general, speaking about food and diet, I know it can be a little bit sensitive for some people. And I think that it depends on you and how you are. I'm aware of my bad habits when it comes to eating. I'm allergic to dairy and I pay no attention to that on a good day. My skin and my stomach don't love me for that. So for me, being on a diet plan and following something like that and trying to eat as many fresh and good whole foods as I can, uh, it does nothing but add positivity to my life. So for this hot girl winter, we are eating some good food, my people. Uh, starting with our waffles for breakfast. Zon, 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 zon. Now I've already shown you this lovely waffle concoction, but it is the Kodiak waffle or Kodiak power cake mix and it's so good. And the only other thing that I'm switching up for the winter really is that I am going to the frozen vegetable life. There is just no way, <laughs> no way that I am paying those winter prices for berries, like $12 for a little bin of berries and you don't even know if they're gonna be good or not. They just come out sour and they go moldy within three days. No, not this winter. We are switching from fresh berries to our berry smoothie. I also like to add some ground chia seeds just to get some extra fiber and goodness in. And then honestly, I add my athletic greens powder to this. It really doesn't uh, hurt the flavor at all, which is totally fine. Delicious. I can't believe it's not butter. The irony of what I just said is beautiful. I was like, mmm, whole healthy foods. And I'm eating like all of the processed, like the most processed thing. I'd rather be having regular maple syrup and butter. But again, for the time being, for all intents and purposes of the program, we got our sauce substitutes. Honestly, honestly, this little combo, like I know it's a lot, but it tastes so good on the waffle. <laughs> so here's breakfast. It's delicious. This waffle's absolutely massive and it tastes amazing. And I actually, like, even though I'm freezing, I'm <laughs> Literally still in my coat. I actually really don't mind the little berry smoothie. It's delicious and it is readily available all winter long. So getting all the antioxidants, the fiber, the goodness. And really when it comes to the meal plan, like I've said before, it is for me, it's how I feel on the inside definitely. And how I look on the outside is obviously a, a plus when it comes to doing this whole, this whole thing, this whole hot girl winter moment and as far as what my goals are when it comes to the meal plan it is inside gut skin glowing how i feel my energy levels all that but i'm still doing like a calorie deficit with my trainer and doing that not to like reach a goal weight the weight is irrelevant it doesn't matter but it's more about the abs and the biceps <laughs> Yeah, like the abs and the biceps. Like guys, I wanted biceps for my entire life. It was something I, like since I played high school sports, I always wanted 
to have visible biceps. My dream is to have someone look at me and be like, what sport do you play? I don't, but thank you for asking. <laughs> it's just a look I love. I, I wanna look like I'm shredded. It's always been a goal of mine and it's something that's really hard to achieve and what I've come to find doing the last year of the program, you can work out as much as you want. You can walk as much as you want. What you're eating is like 99% of it. And, and it's hard to maintain that is hard. But as they say on the internet, choose your hard. That really, do whatever makes you feel amazing. And this right now is a fabulous substitute uh, for when I am wanting to achieve my goals. Next thing that we're doing in the HGW, supplements. Now my actual scientific knowledge surrounding supplements is pretty much a zero, so please consult your dietitian or your nutritionist for all of your health and dietary needs, but here's what I'm taking. I have this cutie little daily organizer I need to refill my thing. I still have two days left, but what I put in is my ritual, essential for women, multivitamin. Love this, still going strong. Vitamin B12 and B3. I'm taking magnesiums out the yin yang because apparently it helps you poop and it helps you sleep, helps with muscle recovery, helps with so many things that I want to have in my life. Chewable vitamin C's because I'm a child. And that's what I put in my little pouch. I just don't put the vitamin C's because I chew that separately, but that's what goes in there. I'm interested in taking other things. I would like to take ashwagandha. Dan takes it. He, oh, I also need to steal your turmeric. <laughs> I'm gonna steal his turmeric. <laughs> um, and another thing, I was just watching a couple TikToks on berberine. Do any of you take berberine? Is that something I should be considering? Please let me know. The only other thing that I take every day is creatine, or as Dan and I like to call it, creatinine. Just take your little five gram scoopula and I put it in my water bottle. I just did that entire chat. I just filled in my entire pill holder. Dan was like, what about your other ones? I'm like, oh. and then we'll be done. Then that's all my supplements. Thank you, kindly. <laughs> yes, I'm still in my coat. It's actually, it's so freezing in the garage. It is almost time to set up the heater for Hawker Winter. But yeah, the next thing I wanna talk about is cardio because that's a big part of the program. And I wanna briefly talk about how I was doing my cardio before, but I need to sit because I can't concentrate when I'm standing. I feel like I'm gonna be referring to this a lot, but last year when I started the program for the first time, last November, I was really, really consistent with my cardio. Basically, it kind of depended on the week and it would change as my workouts would change like everything does throughout the year, but usually I'd have three to four days per week. And the cardio requirement that they gave was basically like a minimum calories burned. So I think when I first started, I had 300 calories burned and then it went up to 350 and then it went up to 400 at one point and I was like, listen, you're... <laughs> Your girl is tired. Can we put this back down? So consistently my cardio requirement is like 350 active calories burned, which I can do in an hour of playing tennis or an hour and a half, usually depends how fast we're going, or I just combine that with walking and a 20 or 30 minute Peloton. And when I first started the program, I was so good about doing the Peloton workouts. I was doing the HIIT running classes. And I wanna say the Peloton treadmill, for those of you who have been around for a long time, I was a hardcore bike, like the Peloton bike, the spin classes, like I was obsessed with spin classes. Then when the lockdown happened, I had the Peloton bike and I was doing all those classes, loved it so much. Have since become a treadmill girly. We are into the treadmill and for a long time I was doing the beginner running classes. And I feel like the Peloton classes were actually so good in helping my running form. Like ask me a couple of years ago if I would ever consider being a running person. Literally never. <laughs> I would have never gone for a run. I would have never touched a treadmill. Like running and cardio, not for me. I would always try to do anything other than running. And I do, I feel like the Peloton classes are really good in helping you if you are a beginner. So I was doing that and then I would like on, the, let me just show you. Let me just show you real quick. On the classes section, you can click running. Then I always go into filter. I go length, sometimes I'll do 20 and 30 minutes, it depends, usually I do the 20, but I also really like the 30 because I feel like you get a better warm up with that. Then I'll go class type and I go intervals. You can also do beginner run, that's what I started with. I started with the beginner runs, but I do interval training because when you do your filter, I like to do the hit runs. 
the hit runs are my favorite. I actually don't do the intervals runs, but for whatever reason, they don't have a separate category for hit runs. So these are what I love, like advanced. I'd probably stay away from that. I usually keep to just like regular or I'll do a beginner one. Oh my God, I love Olivia's classes. She is like so insane. Even if it's just a regular or a beginner, it's still really hard. Um, and I'll usually just go and look at the playlist and see if there's anything I wanna run to here. And then I'll bookmark it if I wanna keep it. But yeah, just in case, if you are wondering. Oh my God, I also love Marcel's classes. Her running classes are amazing. She's hilarious, love this. I've done this one before, apparently. So for those of you who have been following along with the program, just in case you're wondering, that is what I do for cardio. I'll either play tennis or I will do a hit class on the treadmill and that is my routine. Usually, like I'm not doing this today because uh, I typically do it on a leg day. I really like to end a leg day with this and obviously I'm doing this if I'm at home. And this is gonna sound really ridiculous. Obviously, it doesn't matter. You can use any treadmill. And that's a huge part in like keeping up with the program when we're traveling is being able to do this when we're not playing tennis and having the option. Like you can have the Peloton app on your phone and you can do it when you're away, which is awesome. But I hate it when I'm away and I don't have the Peloton treadmill because this little spinny, this spinny knob that changes the speed is so good when you're doing a HIIT workout and you need to get to the sprint speed really fast. Ugh, like some treadmills have the buttons that are preloaded and you can click like speed eight, speed 10, speed 12, and that's totally fine. But if the treadmill has a button or if you have to click up on the screen, I just find it so annoying. And sometimes when I'm like doing a fast sprint, it's hard. You have to just like get off the treadmill. It's whatever, it's a specific annoyance if you will, but I just love the treadmill, love those hit classes. And I need to get back on the cardio because I have not been doing it. I have not been keeping up with the running. And it's something that I just, I'm going to get back onto because I feel like it's moving your full body. You feel so good after it and working out the cardio, the lungs for someone who has activity induced asthma, it just helps in every other area in my life. It helps me feel better when I'm playing tennis. It helps me feel better when I'm going for walks and just, you know, cardiovascular health is not anything to laugh at. It's, it's definitely key in feeling good in your life and longevity. So if you're going to be following along with our hot girl winter series this year, then you're going to be seeing a lot of that. And for those of you who have a Peloton treadmill, come join. Maybe we can do a run together. How cute. We have shed the coat, but we're still in our workout gear. LOL, LOL. Anyway, for the next two pieces of Hot Girl Winter, we are in the bedroom. Whoa, 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 scandalous. Uh, yeah, we're in the bedroom to talk about two things. One being stretching, stretching, oh my God. Another thing that I was so good and disciplined about when I first started the program was my stretching. I was stretching after every workout. Like I have my stretching routine. I stuck to it, I did it. I wasn't sore. I was feeling so good and mobile. I was getting closer and closer to my splits. It was a beautiful thing. And then I just stopped. Like, it's not even a little bit there. Like, I have not been stretching at all. I had a hot little minute where I was like, yes, let's do yoga. I booked in, I went to the yoga studio, and as you may or may not remember, I didn't realize that it was like hot yoga, like 42 degrees hot yoga and cardio. It was like a mix. It was like this cute little mixy mix of a class, but it wasn't yoga. Like, I was going for stretching. <laughs> And stretching is not what I got, so I will be left to my own devices if I want to keep doing yoga, which I'm totally fine with. I actually just tried one on the Peloton app too. Great yoga class. It was fabulous. And I laugh because I literally have the bougiest Dior yoga mat, okay? I have no excuse. I have no reason to not be doing yoga at home. There's a million yoga classes that you can do like on YouTube too. So many of you recommended yoga with Adrian, which I know the Anna edit like raved about for years, years. I simply must do it for my health, my well-being, my mobility and my sanity and my soreness. We're going to be back on our stretching game people and also, obviously, I'd like to be adding yoga into that mix because you just feel so much better for it. You feel so like uh, sun salutations starting the day off right. But you know, we've got a lot in the morning routine, so I'm gonna try to do that, fit it in wherever I can, but stretching after a workout necessary. I also keep a little roller next to my bed because I often roll out my hips before I go to bed because my hips are so sore. And then we also have a few sizes of these little balls. And these are really helpful 
for getting into like nooks and crannies. I have a bigger one that I use for my back because I get a really sore back. And then these are really awesome for your feet, rolling out your feet. So getting a stretching routine in and making sure that you stick to that is so important when you are being very active. Ideally, as I go along and like keep doing classes and following along with yoga and whatnot, I would love to have like my favorites. Like I'd love the five to 10 minute kind of like wake up mobility stretching routine and then doing something before bed stretching after the workouts like it's a lot but you got one body you got one vessel to carry you through life so you got to take care of it you know so the next thing let's talk about sleep i'm sitting on a chair right now because i need to sit in front of the window but here's my bed here's bed i love bed listen sleep has become religious for me at this point <laughs> Sleep is so important and I have been so focused on bettering my sleep health because I was such a bad sleeper for a really long time and I feel like I'm getting better about it. I'm getting better about my sleep health and also sticking to that. Sleep in me, very, very, very important. There's a few things that I do to try to make sure that I get a good night's sleep. I really try to wind down before bed. Listen, the TikTok scroll happens, okay? But in an ideal day, I'm reading before bed. Sometimes I'm just so tired, I do nothing. I just hit the pillow and I'm like, out like a light but i do wear an eye mask dan actually got us this little manta ray eye mask i think he saw it on tiktok it's cool because it's got these like removable eye patches that you can wash which is nice i also have this slip silk eye masks and then i have earplugs earplugs are key uh for me really because meryl howls all night long if you have a chatty animal if you have children like i mean maybe you don't want earplugs if you have children that may or may not cry in the night i don't know i don't have kids so i don't know about that i need to tune meryl's howls out she just loves to sit next to the door and scream at us in the middle of the night we used to i used to let her sleep with me but for the sleep health and the fact that I'm allergic to her, I would wake up like puffy faced, red eyes and sneezing every morning and I'm like, okay, <laughs> we need to address this a little bit. Anyway, sleep. The other new addition that I've been adding to my sleep health routine, which a lot of you have noticed that I've been wearing for the last couple months and commenting on, we did get the Aura Ring and I've been using it for the last few months and I'm a little bit torn about it because on one hand, I thought it would kind of be a replacement for my Apple Watch, which I was mistaken because still very much need to wear the Apple Watch, especially if you have the cellular capabilities and you, you know, talk on it, you speak on the phone, you send messages. Like I really love to use the cell phone attachment with my Apple Watch, but also for workouts. Like for my tennis, I can't wear the Aura Ring when I'm holding the racket. I tried wearing it on the other hand once and it was just, it's not comfortable. It's like quite big and bulky. So I need to take it off for tennis. And I also can't wear it when I'm doing my weight workouts. You can't, like, it pinches your fingers so badly. It also scratches. Like, if you are lifting weights, if you're playing racket sports, if you're needing to grab anything with your hands, like, it does not replace my watch. However, as far as, like, the whole wellness category, the sleep tracking, the cycle tracking, your overall wellness and well-being tracking, it's pretty insane how accurate it has been. It's been really cool to see. Dan and I both got sick. We just had like a couple days where we had a really bad cold and it told us before we knew we were sick, it was like, take care, your readiness is very low. And it gives you a number. It gives you a readiness number based on your sleep, based on your body temperature. Like it's tracking so many things. It's pretty crazy to see. So it literally was like, you're sick. <laughs> please drink some tea. Just kidding. It doesn't say that. It says take care. Your readiness score is low. And that was pretty wild to see. And then the next day we both were like, <sighs> then the cycle tracking, it takes a couple months to like sync up with your cycle and whatnot. And I think they actually just recently introduced a new app, like another app that you can download to go along with it. I think it's called natural cycle or something. I haven't set it up yet, but it predicts my period down to the day, which is crazy. And it hasn't been uh, something that I've been able to really track before because I went off the pill just over a year ago and my cycle has been all out of whack Like I sometimes I won't get my period for two months. Sometimes I won't get my period for a month Sometimes it'll come three weeks after my last period like it's been so all over the place But it tracks your period based on your body temperature and it tracked it to the day It was like you will be getting your period and lo and behold I woke up and got my period that was pretty crazy to see. And you can also see the drop in your body temperature. It's wild, it's wild. Uh, and for sleep, the Aura Ring has almost removed my sleep anxiety in a way. Like sometimes I'll wake up with a nightmare. <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God, crap. Like I've had a bad sleep and then I'll open the Aura Ring app and it'll tell me you've had a great sleep. Like what the Aura Ring has done has actually shown me that I am a good sleeper and I didn't realize it. And I didn't realize that so much of me thinking that I was a bad sleeper was mental whereas actually i reach pretty great deep sleep and i have good rem sleep and i just 
sleep shorter, like five to six hours, but my sleep efficiency is high. So it tells you your readiness score when you wake up. It's like, here's your entire sleep cycle. Here's how many cycles you had. Here's like the hours, the minutes of each cycle that you had. Like it's fascinating to see the breakdown of your sleep. And in a weird way, it's given me comfort and peace kind of knowing what my readiness score is in the morning. But in a way, doesn't that almost kind of become a crutch? It's like one night if I forget to put this on, I'm like, oh no, I don't know what my sleep score is, even though I'm awake and I can just go about my day. So it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword in that way. But it's been really awesome to see trackable numeric values of your wellness and readiness. It's been, it's been cool. With all that being said, it's also very expensive and you also have to pay monthly for the app. So that's totally up to you whether or not you'd wanna do this. I never slept with my watch before, but there are things that you can add to your watch and you can sleep with this if you're just diligent with charging. This is definitely not something you need. The Apple Watch has many capabilities that do similar things and they're also improving it all the time. My watch is like three years old at this point, so I'm sure there's new functions in the updated versions. So it was fun to try. It's been nice to see. I don't think it's something that I'd necessarily recommend. So that's my Aura Ring review and update, if you will, but also big focus on sleep health for hot girl winter, absolutely. All right, gang, we are switching up <laughs> locations. We are on our nightly stroll, which is something that Dan and I have been doing over the summer, and sadly, it's going to end relatively soon, going into the winter season when it starts to pour rain every day. But the next section that we're focusing on for hot girl winter are the steps. And listen, with the program, my step goal also changes all the time. My step goal was 10,000 steps a day for a long time, then it went to 12,000. At one point it was at 15,000, and that was a terrible time, I'm not gonna lie. That was very hard for a gal who doesn't leave the house. <laughs> but getting our steps, like I'd say, is second after diet as far as the most important thing. Like, if we miss our workout for the day, we always try to at least get our steps, and we always feel better for it. So lately, we've actually really been enjoying a nightly stroll. Ideally, we get our steps out of the way in the morning so you don't have to think about it but it's kind of a nice time for us to spend together we have a lot of our deep chats and inspirations and combos on our little nightly strolls and it's been really nice it just makes you feel good we love to do it after a meal so we just ate dinner and now we're going for our long stroll i think it's already been like 45 minutes and we just chat and chat and chat away and you know the time passes and it's lovely but it's a really nice habit and ritual that we've gotten into to be able to go for our walks and in preparation for the winter time obviously we have the treadmill which helps a lot and on the treadmill we'll either watch a show read a book i read the kindle i actually bought the little sticky octo buddy pad to go on the back of my kindle so i can put it on the screen or i'll chat i'll like phone a friend phone my mom <laughs> we sit and chat i'll sit on facetime when i'm on the treadmill just to help pass the time away and then dan in the basement he has the walking pad and he crushes some steps while he's editing so any way that we can get the steps in we are doing as far as tracking our steps go obviously you can use the aura ring you can use your apple watch you can use a fitbit you can buy the little straps that go around your ankle and track as you're walking like there's so many different ways to track your steps on my apple watch i either put indoor walk or if we're doing an outdoor walk sometimes we'll sync it up to our peloton app so it shows up on the calendar which is always nice one thing that i'm going to be mindful of is trying to do more steps throughout the day so that i'm not left at like 10 p.m 11 p.m trying to catch up with my steps so i'm going to try my best to take my mindless scrolling moments throughout the day whenever i want to sit and scroll through tiktok or if i'm just sitting and replying to comments it's actually a really good time for me to get my steps in and to try to turn those like more stationary activities into active ones and that just helps me get the steps in throughout the day. So come on fam, join us and let us get all our steps in this winter. We meet again back at the treadmill because it is nighttime and I'm gonna finish my steps and I am in my Crocs. I have a fresh bloat and I need 4,000 more steps to finish my day. So this is where I shall leave you. But those are the seven things that I'm gonna be focusing on for hot girl winter. And when I started the program last year, I was kind of just doing away with new year's resolutions. And even though I love the fresh start of a new year, that fresh feeling and the idea of like pressing a restart button, I think that's that just can be very motivating and really exciting. But for me, I just really wanted to make long lasting changes to my daily routines and developing long-term good habits that make me feel good 
inside and out and just not making that date dependent and just doing it kind of all the time and just totally revamping and changing my lifestyle and reflecting on the things that I'm doing, looking into my health and wellness habits that I had and how I can change them and how I can improve them to just make me feel better every day. And there's so many things that I've been watching and listening to the podcasts like Andrew Huberman. I actually also watched the uh, Live to 100, the Blue Zone series. And there's just so many things that are really inspiring and little tidbits that you can take into your every day and curate whatever health and wellness routine works for you. But like I said, these are the seven things that I'm going to be focusing on. And I'm really excited to get back into my routine. Hot girl winter starts today. <laughs> and if you want to see me talk about each of these things, each of these seven things, and kind of follow along with my hot grow winter journey. I'm gonna be continuing the series on Instagram and TikTok. I'm gonna be doing daily updates, talking about each individual aspect uh, more at length. And then I'll also do maybe like monthly check-ins here on YouTube. So we'll kind of see how it's all going, see the improvements and embark on this healthy lifestyle journey together, fam. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's a big overview of the program and the continuation of it. And I hope you guys enjoy. And I, I really love talking Talking about these things. I think for the last few years it's just become more and more of an impactful part of my everyday life and I, I feel I feel kind of passionate about it and I hope in turn that you guys are too. <laughs> Let's all be healthy together. No, but really, I, I really enjoy the community that we're building out of it. And it just feels good to feel good, doesn't it? So love you guys a lot. Thank you so much for being here for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon for a new video. Bye!